Hello, I'm Nobby Clark. Welcome to my workshop. I'm sorry I haven't had a video for you for the last couple of weeks. Um, various things going on, but I have been spending a lot of time uh, building this. Um, the engine. Um, you probably saw the last video I put up was the completion of the uh, restoration of this little uh, mammoth uh, minor engine. Uh, sympathetic um, restoration to it, uh, basically only cleaning it up and uh, repainting the, uh, the base uh, and the uh, base for the boiler itself. So taken by this little engine I thought it'd be great fun to build uh, my own version of it. Uh, so here we are. Engine number 10, this is actually the 10th engine um, I've built in my workshop um, quite different to anything else uh, I've built um, this one's the only one I've built that has a boiler although the boiler in this uh, will never be used under steam I only ever intend using this to run from my uh, little compressor and you see I've got the um, adapter I made here so I can fit a, a pipe to it to run off the compressor itself um, the a boiler on this one I actually didn't make out of brass as with the mammoth this is actually made out of copper pipe um, and a copper chimney um, possibly not the best decision to have made really because I found this sort of rather difficult to work with and the fact that I'm not very good at soldering it was quite a job to uh, make the, the various solder joints on this um, but anyway what I wanted to do was uh, to uh, try if I possibly could to improve some features of the design um, where the um, the mount for the cylinder and piston um, the cam and the flywheel is just basically a, a piece of pressed metal um, I opted to make it in a, in a different way and made um, a much uh, sort of heavier mount for it. Um, I made the chimney a little bit taller than on the, the mammoth and put a, a nice brass finlet on the top. Um, I kept the cylinder and piston and can basically the same as on the, the mammoth engine though and the base I uh, fabricated out of um, a piece of steel uh, I've not really done a lot of uh, uh, sheet metal work <laughs> in my workshop at all, but this was um, quite difficult in the end to actually to find a means of bending the metal when I don't have um, things like a metal shear or a metal brake or anything like that to help me bend the um, the the, uh, the angles here. So I had to find various other ways of doing this um, and after I'd done that because of the difficulties of, of making the base I decided not to make the boiler mount in the same way this this is obviously made out of uh, one I guess one long piece of of metal and then sort of bent in into the shape and then uh, joined the join is actually here um, I made mine out of um, four individual pieces of uh, metal. This, uh, the base is steel, these are uh, aluminium and I thought it'd be rather nice to uh, rather than try and solder the aluminium um, or rather braze the aluminium um, I would make all the joints with nice little brass screws and when I painted the uh, the frame here I decided to leave all the screw heads showing so I, I thought it, it just looked nicer uh, with that finish to it. The uh, boiler strap is brass. Uh, all the fittings here obviously are the same brass. Uh, the flywheel and the cam here are made out of um, aluminium. I made the, um, the flywheel um, just out of one solid piece of aluminium because uh, I thought that would give it a, a little bit more weight and in fact the mammoth flywheel weighs I think 19 grams this weighs 25 so I thought that gave a little uh, a little bit of extra extra weight to it as well 
Um, I hope you like it. Um, it took me, I think, over a month to build this. Uh, I didn't do very much in between making all the parts for this. Uh, there's quite a lot of work uh, involved, I and mean, I have had other things going on in between as well, not in the workshop, but uh, uh, I th actually really enjoyed building this. It was a, a lot of fun, a lot of frustration as well, um, in lots of stages, and uh, obviously the, the, the worry at the end of all of this is, will it run? <laughs> but it did actually run first time. Um, so if you can imagine, I was very, very pleased. Um, I wasn't going to bother uh, to make the burner. This is the, the burner for the, the mammoth, which um, I, I literally just soaked the tray here in some vinegar and, and just gave it a, a brush over. That's literally all I did to it, nothing more than that. Um, I decided in the end I would make a burner. A burner here is made out of um, brass. Again, I had to bend all the uh, all the joints on this. Um, I've not really done anything really to the material. I think it was a bit of a clean up because it, it actually was very grubby. I had this large sheet of brass that I bought a, a very, very long time ago. Um, once I'd made the, the actual tray, I had the worry of <laughs> making the handle, um, I don't know if you can guess what the handle was made out of, but uh, I didn't have any um, wire like this in the workshop at all. Uh, the wire I've got is, that I, I do all sorts of odd, odd jobs with in the workshop, is basically gardener's wire. There was some almost as thick as this, but uh, it's, it isn't a very stable. Um, so. I had an inspiration um, the other day, uh, I was with uh, my wife in, in a shop and we were just walking around looking for things on sale and I, I noticed a lot of coat hangers on display for sale. Inspiration, um, when we got home I found um, a wire coat hanger that made it out of there. See, believe it or not, that wire coat hangers, the method is really tough. <laughs> um, it took quite a bit. I, bit of, of, of cutting um, the, the bottom length of wire off the coat hanger and in the end when I'd uh, fabricated this end um, I in the end sawed it to length in there because the, the, the cutters I've got um, struggled to get through it I thought you know, I'd rather use a saw than uh, put dings in the cutter I'd got but that, that turned out okay so I've actually made the whole engine in the end including the burner. I'm going to say it, it, it's not going to be used as a, a live steam model. Um, I'll only ever run this uh, on air. Um, so engine number 10. Um, I have actually, prior to making this, I'd actually started making another engine. Um, I've only made one part of it so far so that would have been engine 10, it's now going to be engine 11 because once I, I got into making this I, I, I just couldn't leave it off, I just had to carry on and, uh, and finish it so there we are, um, I hope you like it <laughs> um, as I say the soldering parts, you know, they, I must admit they're not very pretty but they're functional um, I've used the, the second um, uh, safety valve in this one. That's that's if you like Mark One in this one. It's Mark Two, the one that has the uh, the bronze ball on the, on the top. Although running it on on air, it's uh, probably not uh, ever going to get used really. So a bit of a mixture of materials: steel, aluminium, copper, brass, aluminium, bronze. So there we are, um, I think in, uh, it's one of those things in, in terms of, well, maybe it's engines, in terms of um, materials uh, that I had to buy for this, um, it actually, I think in the end probably cost more than I paid for this one. Um, I had to 
by the um, the copper tube here. It's a slightly bigger bigger diameter than the Mamad one. This is a 42 millimeter OD material. And what I decided to do is what the Mamad have done is they've not made the um, the caps uh, like the boilers, perhaps on small scale uh, railway engines that, that people make, uh, where the caps actually go inside the tube and then are soldered on the end. This one has caps that go over the material on the outside and um, I decided to do the same. Um, and the, the I think this size of uh, copper is used for um, central heating systems. Um, I contacted a, well, quite a number of local plumbing supply companies um, about getting some end uh, end caps and in the end I found um, the one company um, in the town where I live that, that do these and they quoted me a price for them which oh, I thought was quite reasonable uh, when we visited the, the, uh, the shop um, they wanted to charge me about four times what they'd quoted me um, they reckoned that the, the chap that I'd spoken to on the phone had quoted me for plastic ones, not copper ones. So, having if I'd have bought those, it would have made the engine build too expensive. I couldn't really afford to buy those. So, uh, back to my plan B. Um, these end caps um, I actually bought from China. Um, it didn't hold the build up um, because it took about two weeks to get these um, because there's so much else to do on this. Um, the, uh, fortunately I, I left the, the boiler longer than the mammoth one so there's plenty of room to fit these on but these were actually this, this length that when I bought them the caps that I was going to buy locally were more than twice the length here and it would have meant um, cutting them down which wouldn't have been a, a very easy thing to do um, I thought of you know sort of possible ways of doing this but uh, I'm rather glad in the end that I, I got these uh, shipped from overseas it's remarkable that I could buy two of these for less than half the cost of uh, buying them from a plumbing supply company here so there you are um but anyway that's it <laughs> now it's that's finished it works so um now i can get on to uh engine number 11 um i don't know how long that's going to take to, to build uh, like this one there's quite a lot of, uh, of work to do in it uh, but there we are so thank you for joining me in the workshop um, and I hope it won't be too long before I can uh, produce another video for you. Uh, I'm promised that I'm going to be able to produce one every week for a bit, but uh, um, unless I can find um, anything uh, perhaps of interest to, to, to talk about really. Um, thank you again also to all the subscribers to the channel. Uh, most grateful that I've got, uh, added quite a few new uh, subscribers. Um, Oddly enough, um, when I put the video up of the finish of this, uh, I, I don't really know why I didn't get very many views to that one at all. Perhaps uh, it wasn't as interesting to viewers as it was to me, but, but there you are. Anyway, also thanks for all the uh, nice comments I've been receiving as well, and uh, the, the sort of friends I'm making among the uh, home workshop community. That's it from me for, for a while. Thanks very much for joining me. Bye-bye for now.